Matthew chapter 25. I'm going to read the first 10 verses. Let you sit down because there's a whole lot I got to go through. The Bible says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. They didn't prepare. The wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said unto the wise, Girl, give me some of your oil, <laughs> for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and get yours for yourself. Uh huh. I, that, that's that's I keyed it. I'm sorry. Verse ten. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And so we're gonna be preaching from this little phrase. The Bible says, "And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut." Glory. And the word of the Lord is already blessed. Touch the person next to you. Let's pray. Let's get into. It. Father God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to come to share your word, God. Uh, I miss these people. I miss spending time with yes, them. God. And God, I'm just so grateful to be back in the house of the Lord with them. I pray that you bless this time that we have together today. I pray that your word will go forth. Use me now to minister your word. And Father, prepare their hearts and their minds so that they can receive. Father, speak now to these that people. Not what I want, not what I want to say, but thy kingdom and thy will be done. Yes, and God, if somebody's lost, I pray that you save them today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Y'all can sit down for the rest of the day if you want to. Um, so so um, I was praying all week um, what we're going to do, what we're going to say. Matter of fact, I started Sunday driving back here from Mississippi praying about you know what we were going to talk about. And so I thought for about four days we were going to talk about the Olympics. And so I guess I'll be talking on the Olympics in two weeks. Because everybody all in the Olympics and the prizes and all that other stuff. And so at the end of this message, which will not be today, it'll be probably two Sundays from now, uh, we're going to talk about the Olympics. And so we got here to this point, studying for the Olympics <laughs> and studying for the prizes you win at the Olympics. And the Bible says everybody runs the race, but only one receives the prize. And so the Olympics, they give gold, silver, and bronze. So that's where we started. And so now that brought me here. And y'all like, how we got here from the Olympics, right? What I want to talk about today is, are you ready? No, 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 no. Look at somebody. So I, I really need to look them in the eyes and ask them, are you ready? Man. So for me to get to the prize, I got to start with you being. So what I'll spend a lot of time in this text, just to give you the background of the text, um, this is um, parable Jesus told about the second coming. Um, talking about Jesus coming back and Jesus is the bride. Alexis, it's so good to see you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Jesus talked about the bride, and the bride, the bridegroom is Jesus, and the bride is the church. And he gives the example of five wise virgins waiting for the bridegroom and five foolish virgins waiting for the bridegroom. And the five foolish virgins, the reason why they were foolish is they were not ready or prepared for the groom. Now forget about four years ago, so let's say, Daddy, I'm ready. I'm like, what you ready for? I'm ready to be married. I, I'm, re I'm like, girl, you ain't ready. You want a man, but you ain't ready to get married. I'm like, can you cook? And she's like, well, I said, a man needs somebody to cook. He cooked for himself. I said, okay, you ain't ready. So then she got with her mom and she started cooking everything. Everything Simone could cook, Celeste could cook. Celeste washed everything. She started cooking Thanksgiving. Then after that, she said, Daddy, I'm ready. I said, girl, you ain't ready. I told her, you castrate men. 
So that's hard on a man. She, oh, she cut him up. Poor little fellas be like little puppies. I say, you got to let a man be a man. You, got, you, you, you ain't ready for this yet. You, you can't be, you know, you're going to cut him up and then you want him to treat you a certain way. I say, it ain't going to happen. You, you got to learn to be submissive. Oh, Lord. <laughs> ain't ready yet. Then, then, then I told her, one, one of the things I tell people all the time, I told her, I said, write you a list of what you want in a man. Since you, since you so ready. Let me see your list. So she brought her list. And I was like, on this list, you got some, um, I'm going to use this word, rudimentary things. You got some, some juvenile things, some things that's unimportant. On her list, one of the things, I'm just going to share one of the things on her list was, he had to be Greek. I'm like, what Greek got to do with Jesus. That was on a list. That was on a list. So, er, so every man that wasn't an alpha or a Q or a kappa or, or, or what's the other, iota, she ain't had nothing to do with him. I'm like, so, so you ain't, you, you just ain't, because I'm sure they got some good men that ain't one of them dogs. <laughs> oh, Tommy, dog. Oh, yeah. She just wasn't ready. And so what happens so often is uh, we think we're ready for something and we ain't ready. And so in this text, this text is about being prepared. Five girls had the oil for their lamps, to light their lamps, to wait for the bridegroom whenever he came. Because the Bible says no man know the day or the hour. So the girls was waiting for the wedding, waiting for the groom to come. They didn't know when he was going to come, but they were supposed to prepare before he came. But they did not prepare. And so after we get, I'm just going to turn this out, we're getting bad marriages because we ain't ready. Boys get married and they ain't ready to be a man. Timothy said, <laughs> Timothy told me this two weeks ago. We went somewhere and he had to spend some money, right? Timothy is cheap. He does not like to spend money. He got it. I'm sorry, Timothy. Wait, I'm sorry, Nisha, because she'd be mad with me talking about Timothy. Anyway, Timothy is cheap. But this is what he asked me. This, I, I, don't, don't miss this. After he spent the money, he said, so, Dad, is this what being a man is, spending all your money? I said, yep. <laughs> That's what it is. It's accepting responsibility. But you got to be ready. Everybody ain't ready for that. Some brothers get married and they be looking for a maid and a cook and somebody to wipe their feet and stuff. Come on, y'all. You got to be ready. So the text, the text, the text, the text is about being ready. Being ready for what? Being ready for the bride, bridegroom. The bridegroom is Christ. Christ coming back for the church. And the church has to be prepared and ready for him to return. And five of them weren't ready. They made no preparation. And then when they didn't make preparation, they tried to get other folk to help them get in. Kind of like you got married and you wasn't ready. And then you call your mama and your auntie and all them for help and your sister. But they, mama can't help you with that, baby. That situation, you got to figure that out yourself. Mama got her own situation. Daddy got his own situation. And so they came to get the earth. And then I love the text. That's why I made fun of the text. Because the five girls, they had their, their all. They were like, we ain't giving you none of our Let me share, let me share this, this. I don't know why I'm on this marriage stuff. But if your relationship's straight, don't be letting other crazy folk in your relationship messing it up. Don't give away your all. Anyway, I, I digress. I digress. So the reality was they were not ready for the second coming of Christ. So that's what I want us to take time with because I believe we got people that say that they're ready, but they're not ready. I heard this before. If Jesus came right now, will you be ready? I'm talking about right now. Even though you're in church, do you have to get some stuff straight before you go? Because if he came right now, you got to be ready. Let 
Look at, don't look at the neighbor you looked at the last time. Find somebody else, even if you got to turn around. Find somebody else. Ask them, are you really ready? <laughs> if Jesus came, are you ready to go to heaven? Are, are you ready to go to heaven? My grandfather used to tell this uh, story about the preacher in the pulpit and the preacher used to preach and he said, Lord, if you're ready for me to come home, let Gabriel blow his trumpet. And one of the dudes in the band went, do, do, do. <laughs> and the preacher went, Lord, if you're ready for me to come home, let Gabriel blow his trumpet. Dude in the thing, do, do, do. Lord, <laughs> if you're ready for me to come home, let Gabriel blow his trumpet. Do, do, do. And the priest said, Lord, ain't no sense in me lying. I ain't ready to come home. How many of us really not ready? We go to church on a weekly basis. We read our Bible. We wake up in the morning. We say our prayers and all this other stuff. But are we really ready? We just saw Simone's uncle at a funeral a month ago. And it was so funny. I told my mama when I was taking the family picture because he had divorced the, the, um, the, the, the AT. Um, Simone's uncle got up and said, all Harris's past, present, and future, married, divorced, come up. We taking a picture. And I think I'm next to him in the picture. Because he was the first one up there. He was devoted, but he was oh, my Harris. <laughs> he, he was in the picture. My poor my, my, man. Just saw him, just took pictures with him, just laughed and joked with him, and gone. Are you really ready? So I've been, it's been a while since I have been here. And, and you know, I like sports. So Brownie was the 55th pick in the NBA draft. His agent told nobody to draft him because the Lakers was going to draft him. And then the, the GM doubled down and said, yes, it was nepotism. That's why we picked Bronny for the 55th pick. This is the question. All right. He is the 55th pick, yeah. but is he ready? Yeah. Well, yesterday they played summer league. Uh -huh. He started at point guard. Uh -huh. He went two for nine. Uh -huh. <laughs> One steal, two rebounds, and I saw him get shook three times. See, the thing, this, that, that, this, this is the point. It ain't that he doesn't belong. Doesn't mean he might not one day be ready. But is he NBA ready now? Are you ready now? If Jesus came. Now why do we need to get ready? Okay, let's start in John chapter 14, verse number 1. It says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. Jesus said, I'm going. But when I go, I'm going to have a place prepared for you. That place is heaven. I want to stop right here. I need to say this. This place is not the place that's prepared for us. We, we're comfortable here. We breathe the oxygen here. We love it here. We got our family here, our mamas and our daddies and our husbands and our wives and our kids. But this is not the prepared place. There is a prepared place called heaven that is prepared for us, but we have to get ready to go to that place. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go, I will receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Prepared place for prepared people. Is you ready? One of the problems with children playing with guns, 
is they're just not prepared. They don't know about the locks. They don't know about all the little things that need to be done. And they don't understand. They watch TV. They play the little video games. You shoot people, they get up, you get another life. They don't know that we got one life. We got one life. What are we going to do with it? Okay. So Jesus went to prepare a place. The place that he's prepared is heaven. But most of us are trying to stay here. Why do they sell so much aging cream? Take, take the rings, Botox in your eyes and Botox here. Lord Jesus. Implants here. Everybody trying to get younger. And understand that we're living in the land of the dying. I don't care how young you are, how old you are. I just recently I was thinking about thinking about my little cousin, um, little Gregory. He will be about 36, 37 now, but about four or five years old. He just got sick and we didn't know what was wrong. We brought him to the hospital, four, five, six years old. He had cancer, terminal cancer. So it don't make a difference how young you are. You people are like, I got time. I got time. I was, I was telling my mom and Simone this morning, the young man that played next to me on the line of scrimmage, uh, I just saw him at our 40th reunion. We had a good time. They called him Big Ox. <laughs> he was a Zulu and all that other stuff in New Orleans, Big Dog, all this other stuff. And he was driving across the bridge and had a massive heart attack and died in the car. Are you ready? Oh, God, I, I, I was on 4th of July. I was minding my business. They, had, they turned the TV on the Weather Channel. Yeah, a hurricane out there? Where that thing come from? Did it hit yet? Did anybody know? Okay. Because they called and told me, be careful, because the rain's supposed to come up here to Shreveport, Bozier, today or the night or something. Are you ready? What if the hurricane hits directly? For us in New Orleans, it, 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 one of the funniest things after Katrina, I'm just throwing this out here because you got to be ready. Bishop Martin, who was, who was my bishop, my covering bishop for full gospel at the time, he and some people from, from, the, from Louisiana and New Orleans, all that stuff, they went to the White House and they went to the Senate and they went to the House of Representatives because they were trying to put Number five, floodgates. People ask me, why <laughs> why are you not back in New Orleans? Well, the law called me here. But listen to this. They go to get number five floodgates in New Orleans. So if you go in New Orleans, when you go into any, any subdivision that's around water, they got gates, and then they got these floodgates that when it starts to rain, they close it so that the water can stay in the lake and it won't hit the city. When Hurricane Katrina hit, we had category two. During, during 1965, the year before I was born, Hurricane Betsy hit, the floodgates held, but they blew the floodgates so that the water would flood the African-American community. They dynamited it. So Bishop Martin and them go to Congress, go to the president, and they saw the devastation in New Orleans, and what they gave them, they said, the most we could give y'all, now we had two. You have Category 5 hurricanes, the most they could give you. And now in New Orleans, they have Category 3. So if a Category 4 or 5 hits New Orleans, yeah, Katrina wasn't bad. Because Katrina, believe it, it did not hit directly. And so right now, with Category 3, everybody second lining, Hey Pocket Way, Essence Festival, Cash Money just had their 30-year reunion in New Orleans. If a hurricane four or five hits, it will be gone forever. Point I'm making is, are they ready? No. <laughs> they think they ready. Ooh, I'm talking. Are you ready? 
I want to go. I want you to go to First Corinthians. I'm sorry, First Thessalonians, chapter four. I'm gonna to go to Corinthians also, but let's start in First Thessalonians, chapter four. So the first thing we gotta be ready for, and then I'm gonna go back and teach some other stuff. That's why I say it's gonna take three weeks. So I'm putting myself on the clock, and I'm just gonna stop because I know I'm not gonna finish everything. So the first thing that we have to prepare ourselves for, verse thirteen, is the rapture. Are you ready for the rapture? Uh, is you ready for the rapture? Huh. So, when Jesus comes back, let me let me explain. Let, let me read it, then I explain. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that's people that are dead, that you saw not as, even as others which have no hope. So, in other words, um, people that are believers that die, there's hope. So we go to the funeral and people trying to get in the casket. Or you go to the graveyard and people trying to jump in a hole. And I've seen it. And never forget my little cousin, uh, um, uh, Pastor Espy Corny and, and May Corn, Darby Corny, their baby died. And so um, he had a seizure at school. He was in kindergarten or something. So my cousin Drew and Leon, <laughs> you know they're crazy their whole life. Huh? <laughs> so he, the, the boy's dead. They're divide, they would, I'm watching them devise a plan to steal the casket. <laughs> that's, your, that's your nephew. <laughs> Um, you know, so what happens is when we have no hope at a funeral, um, it's like it's over. Everybody at the funeral feels emptiness because of the loss, whether you're a believer or non-believer. But the difference between the believer and the non-believer is hope, not the emptiness. All of us are empty because like the person that we love is now gone. And he said, I don't want y'all to be ignorant, not knowing concerning them which die that you saw not even as others which have no hope as unbelievers suffer jumping in the hole verse 14 for look what it says how do we get ready for if we believe that Jesus died rose again even so them which also sleep in Jesus will God bring with him now that's a oh that's why it's going to take so long cuz you know how much theology in this verse let me work it right quick. Let me, let me, let me work. Go back. You stay. Okay. So the way you get ready, because everybody said, well, how, pastor, how do I know I'm ready? The only people that's ready for Jesus' second coming are believers. If we believe, do you really believe? Pistos. That's the Greek word. Hebrew word, Bartok, do you rely upon God? Do you trust God? Do you know that God is God? Do you believe that Jesus died and rose again? Listen to me. I need y'all to hear this. We, I've been in the church my whole life, and people won't make that easy. That is not easy to believe. How many funerals you been to and somebody got up? Nobody. He said, you got to believe, you got to know without a shadow of a doubt that a man you never saw in Jerusalem, he died, was buried, and three days later, he got up out the grave with all power in his hand. And he said, you got to believe that. And that's the only way you could be ready. You can't pay for it. You can't shout for it. You can't go to church for it. Only thing you can do is believe. Do you believe that? If you don't believe that, you're not ready. Now let me unpack this. He says, even so them also which sleep with Jesus will God bring with him. So this is the theology in that text. So in verse 13, we're talking about people sleeping. So we got, we got dead people in the grave and we got dead people living. So some of y'all in here dead. 
You living, but you dead. Watch this. The kids a couple of years ago used to say, I'm woke. Well, no, you sleeping. Because you dead. So what he's talking about is, now watch this. This is a theology. He's talking about physical and spiritual death. So back to Genesis, God tells Adam, the day that thou sinnest, thou shalt surely die. Apatanesco. You're going to die. And so in Genesis 3, God kicks him out the garden. Apatanesco. He puts a, a curtain between. We're going to make this. Adam on this side. God is on this side. The curtain is in between. Now Adam is dead because he's separated from God. Adam did not physically die the day he ate off the tree. He spiritually died. Verse 13 is people that's physically dead. So when we get to Genesis 5 and 5, Adam dies physically. And so the Bible says, when we die, your relative that died, if they knew Jesus, absent from the body, present with the Lord. So when they died, their last breath, the essence of who they are, left their body and went to be with God and is resting and waiting for this rapture. So note the text. Let's go. Let me read it close. Let me, let me read it. Let's go back to verse 13. That's why it's going to take three weeks to get through this. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, because concerning those which, which are dead, physically dead, that you saw as others which have no hope. So people don't have no hope because they're dead. They think they're never coming back. Verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, so the whole point of getting to heaven is believing. Watch this. Even so those which sleep in Jesus, absent from the body, present with the Lord, will God bring with him? Y'all y'all, y'all saw that. I, I showed it to you. It was so plain. Your light bulb should have went boom. So, so, so when people die, we put their body in the ground. But their spirit, so when the rapture takes place, that spirit that's with God is coming back. Now, why is it coming back? Verse 15, he says this, for this we said to you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive, physically alive, and remain until the coming of the Lord, till the rapture comes, shall not prevent them which are asleep. So let me explain that. So even though we're alive, it's not going to stop the rapture. It's not going to stop the people that's with God from coming back. Ah, that brings us to Matthew in 1 Corinthians. Matthew says there are going to be two in the field. One going to be working and the other one going to be taken up. And those, those of y'all that's here, because I'm be gone, I'm rapturing out of here. You can't stop them from going. Not the ones that's with God for coming back. Let me show it to you. Y'all got to see it. 16, 16. I love teaching this. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. Jesus is coming from heaven. Don't mistake this with Revelation 19. Revelation 19 is what? Just taught it on the phone. You was on the phone. Revelation 19, what is that? I just taught this to y'all Monday. The second coming. Second coming. I taught a lot, but y'all swore to be listening. And I question y'all when I teach. So notice, notice, this is not the second coming. Coming. This is the rapture. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. Oh! The trump of God. Do, do, do. Remember the story? Trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. So the bodies of the people that died in Christ, in verse 16, we got bodies getting up. Go back. Go back verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and raised unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Prevent the people that are sleeping what? Go back another verse. Verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus Christ died, rose again, even so them which are sleeping Jesus, will God do what? So the rapture, what you got to get ready for, 
If you're dead, your body and your spirit is separated. But heaven is a prepared place for that body and your spirit. Lord have mercy. Y'all like, Lord, I need a new body. This thing broken down. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. We're going to work that. We're going to work that. It's in the text. It's in my teaching. Because, you know, you be old and stuff be hurting. You know, I, I go up the ladder. I'm like, oh, Lord, come down the ladder. Oh, Lord. And then, you know, you know, you know when you're old? Bend down to pick something up. If you make a noise, you're old. <laughs> You know, we old people go, uh, uh. <laughs> Young folk be like. <laughs> so, so, so this. <laughs> I try to put a little humor to explain what I'm saying. So, 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 so what's going to happen is, go back to verse um, 7, 16 where I was. So body gets up, spirit coming back with God. God is descending. And the dead in Christ, those that believe that were born again, Hebrews says, these are those who died in faith, having not yet received the promise. So these people believed in Jesus, but, you know, it ain't time yet. Okay, verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain, there go that rapture, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Are you ready for the angel to shout, the trumpet to sound, and then dead in Christ, bodies getting up. Now, now, let me tell you what's happening. Body getting up, spirit coming down, and in the air. So the rapture will not take place on earth. It's taking place in the air. So the body and spirit will meet together, and it will be changed. In the air. Those of us, those of us that are alive at that time when the trumpet sound, our body's going to get up and the whole metamorphosis is going to take place in the air. So the same thing that happens to the dead bodies going to happen to the live bodies because even though we're alive, we dead. But when it hits the air, when God comes back, the transition is going to take place. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Oh, Y'all working me. I got 10 more minutes to finish today. I got, I got 15 more minutes to finish today. All right, let's see where I want to go with this. Verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Everybody ain't going to die. But everybody going to be changed. That metaphor, don't, don't move so fast. So the metamorphosis is going to take place in the air. Dead in Christ, bodies getting up, spirit going in the air, change. Those of us that are alive and remain, caught up in the air, metamorphosis takes place in the air. The reason why I keep using the word metamorphosis, that's the only way that I can explain it. The Bible says, be, be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, which is the word metamorphi, which means the change takes place from the inside out, Lord Hemmer. Well, I'll be preaching my can off. I, I, Y'all don't know what I'm saying. That's why I get excited by myself. I'm serious. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. So born again doesn't take place on you doing better. God touches something on the inside, a metamorphosis changes in your life, and you be like, Lord, everything done changed. I don't even like that. I don't want to do that no more. I want to live different. It's a change on the inside. You must be. You got to be born again. And so he said, be not, be, be not conformed to this world, but have a metamorphosis takes place in your life. It takes place in the air. When we get in the air, man, stuff just going to be happening because he about to take us on home. But are you ready for that? I know you say you're ready. But you can't be ready dropping it like it's hot. You can't be ready if you're still smoking all that weed. You know, talking about it's legal in certain states. Here, here, you, here you taking blacky miles and taking the inside out and, put, and putting marijuana in there. See, y'all, how old y'all think I is? I'm, I'm pretty old, but I know what you do. I know what happens. But you're talking about you're ready. 
You ready? Really? I told, I told, I told my uh, daughter the other day, you know, I, I have a little downtime. So when I have downtime, my downtime is spent on ratchet TV. Pray for me. I need deliverance. Ratchet TV is not good. Tubi is a bad thing in my life. It really is. But I'm just saying, am I going to be ready? Are you really ready? So he says, he said, we're not, we not all going to die. Some people ain't going to die. Don't hope that's you because everybody since the beginning of the time have died. Except for who? No. Enoch and Elijah. Everybody else didn't die. Everybody that was born of a woman has died except two people. And you bet not. One of my good friends went to seminary with. He was an undertaker. And he, he would do the little funeral. And at the end of the funeral, he'll say, he'll say um, um, if I don't see you again, I'll be caught up to meet you because I ain't going to die. Well, he died about 10 years ago. <laughs> he would have said that every funeral. Yeah. I'm going to be caught up to meet you, but, but, but you got to be ready for that. Yeah. All right. So he said, we will not all sleep, but we all will be changed. Verse 16, I'm mean, 52. In a moment, it's going to be quick. Everybody open your eyes wide as you can. Now, bad. That's how quick. In a twinkling of an eye, that's what he's saying. At the last trump, there go that trumpet again. Now, now I want, I want to throw this in. Just throw this in for you. Why we got a trumpet keep sounding? To wake up the dead folk. It's the alarm. That's why when you go to the book of Revelation, you have seven trumpets. Every trumpet wakes up another event in the end of time. It's the alarm. So the trump will sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. So I'll tell my part of the story. You hold on to your part of the story. My daddy died. And I know her part of the story, because we always are, we all we have a disagreement about this story. That's why I told her that for I said that. Anyway, my dad dies. And when when a, when a family member dies, you have to go to the funeral home to view the body before. I sometimes like. Well, you, you know, people are like, we're going to see how they look. I'm like, gosh, they're dead. I mean, you know, but they, but they invite you early to go visit, right? And so when we got there, my dad's body had, body had already started to decay. It was decay. It was already decay, and he was already his mouth. And, and so when you go to the funeral parlor, that's, 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 the, wrong, that's the bad part about um, funeral homes. They want pretty up the dead. You know they have makeup artists for the funeral home. Yeah. They have hairdressers for the hill funeral home. Yeah. They got people now that come do your nails for the funeral home. Yeah. But guess what? You still dead. And you decay. So the reason why I mentioned the decay. The decay means your body has started to corrupt. So when Jesus stepped out to, to rise Lazarus from the dead, they said he's already been dead for four days. The reason why they mentioned four days, after four days, the body is now corrupt. Anything that touches that body is ceremonially unclean because the body starts to decay. And so they didn't want to touch Lazarus. Jesus said, go move the stone away. I don't care if it's four days. And so now the Bible says when our bodies get up, the people that's dead, if you're dead, your body's going to get up incorruptible. People been dead for centuries. It's going to get up incorruptible. And then the rest of us that's down here on earth, we're just going to be changed. I'm telling y'all, if you've never seen Left Behind, just need to see Left Behind for the first scene when, they, when they're riding on the plane and the pilot just leaves. That's the best part of the movie. Best part of the movie. They're on the plane, and then the pilot just gone. Hat in the seat. Who going to fly the plane? Worst part of the movie it was when the people went to the church and the pastor was explaining to him what happened and he wasn't out of here. Worst of all, they, they had to go back. The, the people start going to church. 
What's going on? And so the pastor started breaking it down. What I'm preaching right now, he started breaking it down. Problem is, he was supposed to be gone. But he wasn't ready. <laughs> All right. Last verse. Is it one more there? Or that's it? All right. Let me give you one more thing. I got five more minutes. Ah. Mm, where I want to go. Where I want to go. Where I want to go. All right. Go to Matthew. Let's, let's end in Matthew 24. Let's end there. And I'll tell y'all one other thing about 24, 38, verse 38. Matthew 24, 38. So my question is, are you ready? My answer is the only way you can be ready is you have to be born again. And you got to know that you're born again. You got to believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, that he died on the cross, that he rose again from the dead. <laughs> And then he's coming back for us. For as in the days of Noah, and I'll teach on Noah, but I, I pulled him out. Because the Bible says when Noah got on the ark, the Lord shut the door. <laughs> so Noah had to prepare. That's what I was going to preach on. How Noah prepared, had to get ready. And then God shut the door because nobody else was ready. So only eight people were ready. People, people, people thought like, God ain't mean. If God was a mean God like that, God ain't going to let everybody die if you ain't ready. <laughs> For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking. Everybody chilling like now. Like I said, New Orleans is going crazy. Essence Festival. Their Urshan was last night. Night before last was cash money. And Simone was like, but I ain't seen none of the videos. Well, you don't have no ratchet friends. All my ratchet friends was at cash money. All of them had their phones up. Everybody mad because Lil Wayne ain't show up. Where Lil Wayne? Well, Lil Wayne and Birdman beefing. Yeah, I'm trying to tell you, they be so, you know, but, but, but see, see, that's what the Bible says. When, when the flood of Noah came, Noah for, 120 years. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. He tripping. He building the boat. Y'all tripping. Y'all going to church. What y'all going to church for? What you believe in God? Why are you living right? You can live any way you want to live. You can love who you want to love. You can drink what you want to drink. You can just do anything you want to do. Like Shakespeare. Eat, drink, and be a merry. For tomorrow we die. The reason why Shakespeare says that because when you die in Shakespeare's understanding, it's over. There is no afterlife. So you can eat, drink, and be merry. Act a fool. Woo! Do whatever you want. Because after that, it's over. So the Bible said this is what they were doing. They were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark. Go to the next verse. And knew not until the flood came. They, 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 that word knew is, is the same word for sex or intimacy, which means they knew. They, 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 they had no knowledge, no intimate knowledge of what's going to happen until the flood came. Y'all missed it. Don't miss this. I, I got, oh, I got one minute, Lord. Please. So, so Noah had been telling them it was going to happen, but they didn't know. But when the flood came, then they knew. When, when I was building the church in New Orleans, I was doing this. I say, Simone, this is where the office is going to Pope is gonna be here, and where these pipes coming up, that's where the that's where the, the baptismal pool. And she was like, What? Now that before the pipe, before the slab, when, when it was just ground, I was showing her. I so the walls went up, but they didn't have no walls on the inside. And I said, Yeah, this way. And she's like, okay. Not till they built offices. And she saw the actual office. And they built the pulpit when she saw. She knew. Noah had been talking to them knuckleheads for 120 years. Preachers been preaching for thousands of years. He coming back. But they ain't going to know till they look up. And folk going to be gone. And graves going to be empty. And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Wow. 
Read that next verse and I'm done. Then shall two be in the field. One shall be taken and the other left. Come here, Timothy. This is my, I'm done. I'm going to pick up from here next week. So Timothy and I are here. Imagine us here. And then all of a sudden, I'm gone. And he's still there. That's how the rapture is going to be. If you ain't ready, the people that you love, God bless you, and know you, they're going to be with God. And you're going to still be here on earth. Now, y'all going to see the problem with that next week because if you left, now you got to deal with tribulation. 40 weeks or 70 weeks, I'm sorry. <laughs> the tribulation period, the abomination of desecration, the mark of the beast, the antichrist, the seven bowls being poured out. Now, if if you ain't ready, now you got to deal with this stuff. Hmm. So, so, was America ready for Donald Trump? Was America ready for Joe Biden getting old? Listen to me, y'all. See, when you're not ready, you got to deal with the consequences. So you can trip and talk about, I don't need to be born again. I don't need to go. Or you can come to church and not really be born again. <laughs> but if you ain't ready, see, 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 preacher can preach. I, I try to do the best at eulogies. I try to preach them good. But no matter how good I preach a eulogy, it don't get you in heaven. <laughs> Got to know Jesus for yourself. Let me see. So what I want to do, my time is up. I went five minutes over. I'm done. I'm going to pick up that next week because I'm working my way to the Olympics. I know y'all don't see it, but I'm working my way. I'm working my way. 